local schools beef safety measures after the Florida shooting. The county health department that's handing out free flu shots and the feds say there's more proof than ever that Russia meddled in the presidential election. This is a Unite Lady. <laughs> Thanks for watching OU Nightly. I'm Caitlin Howard. And I'm Cheyenne Plummer. Oklahoma remains at the height of flu season tonight. It's so serious that one Oklahoma county is now offering free flu shots to everyone. The Payne County Health Department will give the free immunization, no question asked. Other health departments in Oklahoma offer free immunizations to senior citizens, people on Medicaid or Medicare, or those who can prove they are low income. With a record 153 Oklahomans killed by the flu this year and the state's first child from fatality reported this week, Doctors say it is still important that everyone get a flu shot. There's still time for each of us to contribute to fighting the flu this year. Getting a flu shot, as recommended for every American over six months of age, makes you less likely to get the flu and less likely to spread it to those who are most vulnerable, our children and senior citizens. County health departments are closed on the weekends and won't be open this Monday due to President's Day. The next date for free shots in Payne County is Tuesday. Shots are also available at most pharmacies and doctor's offices. Oklahoma teachers may take action if there's not a budget plan to give them raises soon. Teachers rallied at the state capitol earlier this week, but did not have an impact on the lawmakers voting on the Step Up Oklahoma plan. The proposal would have given teachers a $5,000 a year pay raise. Now some teacher groups are considering a walk off the job. The Tulsa World reports teachers in Bartlesville are responding to an online survey that asked if teachers would consider a walkout. Oklahoma is one of the lowest paying states for teachers in the country. Teachers here have not had a raise in 10 years. It's not only teachers concerned with the state's budget problem. The Step Up Oklahoma plan would have provided much needed funding for Oklahoma prisons. Now, the Oklahoma Department of Corrections says it has no choice but to continue a hiring freeze. This is the second year the department has had to postpone hiring, which means there are fewer prison guards and other staff to deal with the prison population that is at 113 percent capacity. In the wake of the Florida school shooting, Norman schools want parents to know they're committed to keeping kids as safe as possible. Thanks to a 2014 bond issue, construction at all Norman schools allowed for security vestibules and additional safety checks for visitors. Schools also routinely hold safety drills, and this week there was in an increased pre police presence on campuses. We checked with Norman police and the OU campus, and there has not been an increase in calls for security by students or parents. And Brooke Mursky joins us now with more on what one politician is calling for after the Florida shooting. Attorney General Jeff Sessions ordered a special review today regarding how the FBI responds to indications of potential violence. This has been ordered due to the Bureau's failure to act on a tip about the Parkland, Florida school shooting. Back in January, someone close to the shooter, Nicholas Cruz, contacted the FBI about his potential danger, but protocols were not followed. Because of the lack of action taken, Florida Governor Rick Scott has called to resign. U.S. federal grand jury has accused 13 Russian nationals and three Russian entities of interfering in the 2016 presidential election, beginning as early as 2014. Rosenstein. The defendants posed as politically and socially active Americans, advocating for and against particular candidates. They established social media pages and groups to communicate with unwitting Americans. Rosenstein said today that there are no allegations that these actions could have altered the outcome of the 2016 election. According to USA Today, Major General Joseph Harrington has been stripped of a star by the U.S. Army. Harrington allegedly flirted with the wife of an enlisted soldier on social media in more than 1,000 messages. The Army released a letter of reprimand forcing him to retire because of his inappropriate actions. And Caitlin, by 2022, McDonald says they will be taking cheeseburgers off the kids' menu in order to make meals healthier, but parents can still ask for them. Thank you, Brooke. Even though yesterday was warm, Brian Briggs joins us now on what students are doing to enjoy today's cold temperatures. Brian? 
Oh. <clears throat> All right, well, yeah, that's right. You know, we're out here right now at the Skate Into Spring event here at the Walker Adams Mall. And as you can see, there are quite a few students already here. The event goes from three to eight tonight. So if you don't have any plans for this Friday at night, you know, it's a good evening to come out here and enjoy the winter white weather. You know, definitely a noticeable change from what we saw yesterday. If we look at our current temperature change outside right now from this time yesterday, we're seeing upwards of a 30 degree temperature change across the whole state. And if we look at current temperatures right now, 40. So definitely feeling a lot more like February in our area right now. And if we look to the south, you know, we've had cloud cover all, all of today. We actually have some rain that's to our south. This is expected to move into our area later tonight. So we may see some showers at this event. Could put a damper on things, but um, Leah Hill coming up in Maine weather will have more on your rain chances heading in to the evening and into next week. So as I mentioned, if you don't have any plans this Friday night, come out here, you know, it's free ice skating you're gonna have free food as well you don't have to bring your own ice skates and if you want to make some new friends there's plenty of people out here but for now back to you guys at the desk thanks Brian still ahead on OU nightly why some northeastern Oklahomans felt a little shaky this morning plus later in Big Friday sports we'll give you an update on recent Olympic events and we'll take a look at our Olympic medal tracker Some northeastern Oklahomans got a shaky wake-up call this morning. That's because today the region experienced four small earthquakes. The strongest was a magnitude 3.8 and struck at 721 a.m., about 285 miles northwest of Oklahoma City. No injuries or damages have been reported. One Claremore man is behind bars today because police say he told his son to kill himself. Michael Jensen of Claremore was arrested Wednesday on charges of child neglect after police say he suggested his 12-year-old son set himself on fire. The boy suffered minor burns as a result. Rogers County Sheriff Coy Jenkins said the boy had previously attempted suicide and was living with his grandparents when Jensen visited. 25-year-old Dustin Melvin Davison was sentenced to death yesterday for the 2015 beating death of his ex-girlfriend's son. The child died on May 18, 2015 after suffering a skull fracture, brain bleeding, a broken jawbone, and nearly 50 bruises below the neck. The jurors chose the sentence based on grounds that the child's death was especially heinous and that Davison would continue to be a threat to society. Still ahead on OU Nightly, how OU alums are celebrating the turn of the Chinese lunar calendar. Well, welcome back to OU Nightly. It looks a little bit gloomy outside, actually. We have clouds all over the area currently. And as you can see in our Norman Sky Cam, just cloudy conditions everywhere. We even heard word just a little bit ago that there was some sleet in the Norman area down by the National Weather Center off of 9. But currently temperatures are a little bit chilly actually right now, 44 degrees. We do have a little bit of a gusty wind and um, it's, the dew point is very a little bit higher. So it feels just overall very, very muggy if you are going to be outside. Now, we are going to get some rain this evening. Thank goodness that is going to start to move in anywhere between 10 and 12 p.m. And as you can see, that rain is going to cover most of the central portion of the state all the way down into the south. In Dallas may even get some rain as well tonight. This is much needed because we have been seeing just a lot of drought conditions recently these past couple weeks. So this will hopefully bring quite a bit of relief that will clear out as we get in towards our day tomorrow, making Saturday very beautiful overall. Now, here's our future rainfall as those storms start to move in. We 
are going to get upwards of a half of an inch of rain here in Norman, a little bit less, quarter of an inch in Oklahoma City. But like I said earlier, it is going to bring just a little bit of relief to those drought conditions that we have been seeing these past couple weeks. So this rain is a very good thing. We're all very excited to see that, I'm sure. Now, this evening, as we see, rain starts around 10 p.m. Winds are going to be very light. Those temperatures are going to be dropping 38 degrees by midnight. Across the state, we're seeing colder temperatures as well. 36 for our low here in Norman. Up towards the Panhandle, they're looking to be about the 30s as well. A little bit warmer down towards the south in Idabel, 44 degrees for their low tonight. Now tomorrow, we are going to warm up quite a bit. Those clouds are going to be sticking around and the rain chances will dissipate. We're going to be 60 degrees at 4 p.m., so making it a beautiful day overall. We just see 60s all across the boards here in Norman, just a little bit above average for this time of year. Now, we have been seeing quite crazy temperatures these past couple weeks. As you can see, it's just a roller coaster. We just go up and down this entire month. Some days we even reached 80 degrees yesterday. We are colder than what we were yesterday. But tomorrow we're going to see another bit of a warm up as we get in towards next week as well. So gorgeous day tomorrow, warmer temps. We're going to see that roller coaster just climbing another hill. As we get towards Sunday, it is going to stay warm with those gusty winds. Now, next week is when things start to get a little bit more like a roller coaster. Temperatures are going to drop. We have a cold front coming in on Tuesday, bringing with it some rain chances for Tuesday into Wednesday. And as you can see, another drop in temperatures. But then we go back up on Thursday, high of 52 degrees, and we'll be back in the 60s on Friday. Yeah, I'm glad to hear we're getting some rain. Going to get us out of that drought a little yes. bit early? Yeah, we really need it. We've just been nothing but dry. My car is a mess from all the blust going around, so hoping that this will take care of that a little bit. I'm also excited for a little bit warmer temperatures towards the beginning of the week, even if it does kind of roller coaster back down yeah. into the colder temps. The up and down is what makes it a little bit exciting. Yeah, it's kind of what living in Oklahoma is all about. Yeah, it always surprises you, for sure. Thanks, Leah. Get ready to celebrate! Today marks the beginning of the Chinese Lunar New Year, and this year is the Year of the Dog. In honor of the Lunar New Year, OU's International Alumni Association is hosting a dinner around the world tonight at Golden Phoenix in Oklahoma City from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Attendees will enjoy food vendors, lion dancers, um, and calligraphers, and more. Information can be found on the OU International Alumni Association's Facebook page. I was doing a little bit of research before this and I saw that uh, my Chinese zodiac sign is actually the tiger. Mine is the tiger too, really? so you were born in 98 as well. Yes, I was. <laughs> Well, not to toot my own horn, but I looked up some of the personality traits that go with the Year of the Tiger, and it's people who are very self-confident. And, Ooh. you know, I feel like I have a lot of that. What about you? <laughs> I feel the same way. I'm glad to hear that. I think you have to. <laughs> That's it That's for the news for this Friday night, but don't leave just yet. Big Friday Sports is on deck. Our sports team gives an extended look at what's happening in sports. Reagan Ledbetter is here with more. Yeah, thanks, guys. Hey, it is opening day. The OU baseball team got things started today after a very, very long offseason. Plus, an OU great and former crowd favorite is taking his skills to L.A. this weekend. Big Friday Sports is just around the corner. another edition of Big Friday Sports. I am Reagan Ledbetter. And I'm Matt Marks. Reagan, it is one of my favorite times of the year. Baseball season is back. Finally. Yes, it is, Matt. Let's get right into that. It may not feel like baseball season here in Norman right now. It's very, very chilly, but that is not the case out on the East Coast. The OU baseball team kicked off their 2018 campaign this afternoon at the Baseball at the Beach Tournament in Myrtle Beach. The Sooners are 1-0 after a 6-3 win over Indiana, and they did it via the long ball. Freshman stud Cade Cavalli got things started with a bomb in his first ever at bat. Steel Walker and Kyle Mendenhall also went yard. The Sooners racked up nine hits today and now play South Alabama and Coastal Carolina tomorrow. And tonight, number 12 Nebraska travels to Oklahoma City to face the number one OU women's gymnastics team in the Perfect 10 Challenge. Last week, and coming off a win against North Carolina, the Sooners posted a season high 197.880, led by a Perfect 10 from sophomore Maggie Nichols. The Sooners have won the last five matchups against Nebraska. The meet takes place tonight at 645 at Cox Convention Center. 
Well, no, no meet this week for the men's, men's gymnastics teams, but their star, Yul Moldauer, still has a very, very big weekend. Moldauer made his way to Las Vegas this weekend for the 2018 Winter Cup, the only current Sooner competing. He is the defending champ and has already shined this year. He finished tied for first on the floor yesterday, second on rings, and fifth on the pommel horse. Because he has already qualified for the Cup Finals, he has been automatically selected for the U.S. national team. Tomorrow morning, it is Oklahoma versus Texas, so buckle up for a Red River Rivalry Basketball Showdown. Trey Young and the Sooners will welcome Mo Bamba and the Longhorns tomorrow at 11 a.m. at the Lloyd Noble Center. The last time these two matched up, the Longhorns won 79-74 in Austin. And, the, and the, the both teams have been struggling as of late with the Longhorns losing three straight and the Sooners four. Texas currently sits ninth and OU fifth in the Big 12 standings. And former Sooner Buddy Love gets to show off his skills Saturday night in L.A. in the NBA Skills Challenge, part of the NBA All-Star Weekend. Heald will be one of eight players competing Saturday night. We all know the kind of player Buddy is, but he will be challenged in a field of guys like Joel Embiid, Lou Williams, and Al Horford. This week in the NBA will showcase their talents All-Star Weekend, starting with the Rising Stars Challenge at 8 p.m. tonight. It'll be the USA versus the world team. Former Sooners guard and current Sacramento King Buddy Hill will play for the world team, as Reagan mentioned. Saturday will be the Skills Challenge, three-point shooting contest, and the Slam Dunk Contest. And on Sunday night, it will be Team LeBron versus Team Curry in the NBA All-Star Game starting at 7 p.m. And Tiger Woods made his first appearance at the Riviera since 2006 yesterday, a place that does not treat him too kindly. This is Tiger's 11th time playing this course, and he has never won there. He was six off the lead yesterday after shooting a one over 72. Right now he is on the seventh hole of round two and is plus one on the day and is flirting with the cut line. And tonight, all eyes will be on Woods' former longtime girlfriend, Lindsey Vaughn, as she makes her 2018 Olympics debut. Competing in the women's Super G, Vaughn will look to add to her career medal count after winning gold and bronze medals in Vancouver in 2010. And the U.S. men's hockey team is officially in the win column. After blowing a 2-0 lead in their opening game to Slovenia, they got back on track last night with a 2-1 win over Slovakia. Slovakia came into the game with high hopes after stunning the Olympic athletes of Russia in their opener. Ryan Donato carried the U.S. telling both goals. Next up, they get their shot at the Olympic athletes of Russia. And as for the updated medal count, Norway continues to lead with 19 medals. Germany has 15, including nine gold. The Netherlands and Canada are tied with 13. And for the United States, however, they are still behind the pack with only eight medals, five of which are gold. Still to come on Big Friday Sports, this past weekend, a group of sports journalists from the Gaylord College took a trip to Nashville to hear some, from the, some of the best in the industry. Stay with us. Welcome back to Big Friday Sports here at OU Nightly. We appreciate all of you viewers seeing what we do every day. And we are very grateful that people like you pay attention to our collegiate newscasts. We assume you have some vested interest in how your donations or taxes are being spent. So please take a look at just one of the things OU student journalists are able to do thanks to you. Last weekend, Sam Brown, myself, and six other students from OU's Gaylord College took a trip to Nashville to be a part of the fifth annual Buster Only Sports Reporting Workshop at Vanderbilt University. The trip started bright and early Thursday morning, and after 12 hours, several pit stops, and one wrong turn, we finally made it to the Music City. We got a chance to experience some of the city life, including the iconic Broadway Street. This wasn't just any other workshop. The conference featured speakers from across the sports journalism world, including Gaylord's very own Barry Orr, who gave a lecture at the conference for the third straight year. The headliner, however, was ESPN's senior writer and baseball analyst Buster Olney. Olney has been immersed in the world of journalism for over 30 years and has experienced firsthand all the changes to this growing industry. Uh, I mean, I almost have the full spectrum at this point. When I first started writing for my college paper using typewriters, yeah. and then we first were the ones, word processors, computers, and how that would uh, develop. And now, with the advent of social media, the news cycle's gone from being, when I worked at the New York Times, you'd turn in stories at 8 p.m., then 11 p.m., uh, and then maybe 12.30. Now the news cycle's 24 hours. 
But the conference was more than just on-air talent and writers talking about their successes. It was about storytelling and conflict. We live in an era where the public is as divided as it's ever been, and race and sports are as intertwined as they've ever been. But there is a chance for change, and it all starts with the ball. You know, um, just because we look different or come from different racial backgrounds or socioeconomic backgrounds do not, does not mean that we can't link up and have the same heart, the same vision, the same compassion. Sports unites us. It, it unites us. And then we can talk about some of the differences from there. But it takes us to have the ability to listen. Another issue addressed by the conference was the rise of women in sports journalism. Some people may find it unusual for women to be color commentating football or basketball, but ESPN's Jessica Mendoza says that the only thing that should matter is how well you know the game. What's cool now is I feel like for women, um, the doors have, have opened, and as much as it could be harder, it, it really isn't. If you're into sports, if you're into what goes on with production, um, if you're into photography, I mean, there's so many different ways to cover sports, is don't think that you're gender should be a hindrance or even you know something that makes you any sort of different. There's no denying journalism is more important now than ever before. In a world filled with controversy and fake news, the truth becomes harder to find every day. But journalism is more than just giving the public their news. It's about touching their hearts with real emotional stories. And for eight journalism students from Oklahoma, their story has just begun. For Big Friday Sports, I'm Sam Brown. And I'm Spencer Royce. Hey, thanks for watching Big Friday Sports. Happy Friday. Good night.